Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done. Your work in all our lives. Your work in the world. Your goodness is manifest to such a degree and in such a way that no one could ever raise their hand against you. You do all things well. Father, for your own glory, for your own name, for the benefit of your people, I pray that you would help us this morning to learn something about the gospel, about your dear son, about your character and glory. Father, it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to hear the what we have heard thus far from, from many of the men who have shared their definitions of the gospel. Lord, we're hearing things that scribes longed to hear and did not hear. Lord, help us to walk in the gospel. Help us to be discerning and wise. Help us to please you in all things. Protect us, Lord, from evil and evil men. Guide us and lead us in a way everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while uh, the definitions were being shared this morning, um, the preposition in was used, to believe in God. And of course, that's a biblical phrase, very biblical. Sometimes I think it's really good to pull that preposition out of there and just say, believe God. An emphasis in, in the writings of John is to believe God. A person can believe in God, in a sense. They believe in His existence, maybe some even biblical realities of God. It's one thing to believe in Him. Another is to believe Him. To believe what He says. To believe the testimony that He gives regarding His Son. One of the greatest declarations of our trust in someone's character is to believe them. No matter what happens, no matter the circumstances, no matter our point of view, we believe them when they speak. Also, one of the greatest ways to attack someone's character and to defame them is not to believe. That is why faith is so important. Faith has everything to do with the character of God and with the character of His Word. And that is why to not believe God is wrong. I was speaking yesterday with a young man who's gone through a terrible trial that no one would ever choose for themselves. I could hardly think of having your world rocked any harder than his. But when I spoke with him yesterday, I, I spoke, hopefully I was sensitive, but at the same time, I didn't give place for his flesh. I said, you must stand upon the character of God. You must believe God. There is no room for doubt. There is no room for pining or whining. You must stand firm in what you know about the character of God. And that's always the case. Today we seem to want to coddle men and to almost say it's all right for them to be angry with God, to say it's all right for them not to believe or to have doubts, but it's not right, ever. It's not right. Now, we have to be sensitive and compassionate with those who will doubt. We all doubt to some degree. But at the same time, there's nothing right about it. He is never worthy of our doubt. He is forever worthy of our faith. Now, today, what we've been talking about yesterday, uh, I guess the last time we met, we were talking about the glory of God. 
And we're looking for the motives for which God would send His Son to die. First of all, we recognize that when we look at God, there's no need in God. God has no need whatsoever. And I just want to reread something that Tozer said. We're all human beings suddenly to become blind, still the sun would shine by day and the stars by night, for these owe nothing to the millions who benefit from their light. So were every man on earth to become atheist, it could not affect God in any way. He is what He is in Himself without regard to any other. To believe in Him adds nothing to His perfections. To doubt Him takes nothing away. So we know that God did not send His Son to redeem a humanity because there was some need within God. We also, when we look inwardly at man, and most importantly, when we look at the Scripture's testimony about man, we understand that God did not send His Son because of some inherent worth, virtue, or merit in man. Now, why is this so very important? Do we just hate humanity? Why are we saying this? Well, we're saying it, first of all, because it's true. That must be our first motive in absolutely everything. It's just true. Whether it has any benefit for us or not, whether it results in anything good or bad, we're not pragmatists. We say it because it's true. But also we say it so that we might have a right perspective about what God has done for us ultimately. Remember the, the woman that came to Jesus and when everyone looked at her with disdain, he said that she loved much because she had been forgiven much. There seemed to be a greater appreciation of the salvation granted her because she had a greater understanding that she was unworthy. I would submit to you that many times maybe we do not love much because we do not understand how much we have been forgiven and we do not understand how much we've been forgiven because it seems to be the outcry or the theme of evangelical proclamation today to say man's not that bad to make man the center of all things so that when we speak about God's salvation, well, of course, that's exactly what God should do. I mean, for Him to do any other thing would be unthinkable. Of course, He should save us. I find it amazing that in the scheme of things, angels are, from what we understand in Scripture, I've never seen one, but are fairly incredible, splendid creatures. I mean... You walked in this room this morning, and to be honest with you, I wasn't that taken back, and I, I'm still not standing in awe. But I guarantee you, if an angel walked in this morning, you would definitely see a change in my face, a change in my reaction. I, I would probably do what a lot of biblical characters did when confronted with such splendor. They had a tendency to want to worship, to fall down, to do something. So angels are fairly splendid beings, yet God did not send them a Savior. Seems no one has a problem with that. God did not send them a Savior. He did not have to send a Savior to you. He provided no redemption for angels, and yet He is still a good loving and great God. He did not have to provide redemption for anyone. Do you see that? That's very, very important. It's why we speak much about what man actually is. Because it's in that dark background that we paint of man's humanity that we can see the glory of God. And that's what we're shooting for. That's what we're always shooting for. Not unto us, not unto us, but unto God be the glory. That's what we want. 
That's what we want. Now, 